Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2020 Ford Transit 250, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Takancha Prodigy P3 brake controller. We're going to be installing this in conjunction with the Takancha OEM replacement vehicle wiring harness. So the P3 is a brake controller that I personally really like. It's one you really can't go wrong with, especially for a vehicle like a Transit. Really capable and have a lot of different uses. So whether you're towing multiple different types of trailers for work or even on the weekend whenever you go out and play, this brake controller is going to be easily adjusted and fine-tuned for that particular trailer that you're pulling that day. So one of the best things about this is that it is a proportional style brake controller. And in my opinion, that's really the only style that I personally would ever go with. It's just going to give you a lot smoother and more predictable braking. And so what that proportional means is the harder you apply the brakes in your transit, the trailer's going to match it. So to kind of give you an example, say if you're just cruising through town, hit a red light, you kind of come to a rolling stop, and you just lightly hit the brakes, the trailer's going to do the same thing. But let's say if you're on the highway, cruising, and... Maybe there's an accident up ahead, something like that, and you really need to come to an emergency stop and really stand on them brakes. The trailer's going to do the same thing. And so that's just going to make your whole experience that much more pleasant, knowing that the trailer is stopping behind you nice and smooth. And I kind of talked about a minute ago how versatile the Transit is. You're going to want a brake controller that is going to be the same way, a good matchup. And this one is going to offer us all those settings. One of them being the boost setting. So you're going to have three boost settings and the setting where the boost is turned off, which here it is right now. So with the boost off, you would typically have it turned off whenever you're pulling a trailer that is lighter than your vehicle. Trailer about the same weight, maybe a little heavier. Push that button, boost level one comes on and it kind of gives you a little icon here too to give you an idea. That's where you'd use boost one. Really heavy trailer, you can crank it up to boost two. And for something extremely heavy, which in most cases in the transit, you're probably not gonna be able to pull something that heavy or that large. But if the time comes, you can turn it on to boost level three. So what's great about those easy boost settings is what that's gonna do is change how aggressive your brakes are applied. So obviously with a heavier load, you're going to want them brakes to come on a little bit stronger. And again, that's going to provide you with that nice, smooth, predictable stop. And so instead of having to kind of worry about it or change your driving habits, you can select the boost to match your trailer and it's going to really do all the work for you. You're not going to have to think about messing around with the settings too much or changing your driving style. You can also adjust the power level. So if you come to these arrows, if you push down, it goes all the way from minimal voltage. If you run it all the way down to zero and goes all the way up to 14. Now this is a setting you're probably going to only have to adjust once. But what you would do is hook up to your trailer and pull it down the road and apply the brakes. And if the brakes lock up, or kind of drag a little bit, you can turn that power down. If they are coming on a little bit slower than you'd like or not as hard, you can also turn the power up. But kind of a good rule of thumb is to start about halfway and kind of work from there to figure out where you need to be. And from there, we do have a couple more kind of neat settings. Push this bottom right button It'll give us display and brake type and then a little help menu, but brake type, we can choose from electric or hydraulic. And you can also change the display. So you can go through your brightness, different types of colors. So you can kind of set everything up how you like it and kind of personalize it to make it your own. On the bottom side of the brake controller is gonna be a little lever here and that's going to be your manual override. So whenever you hit this lever, it's just going to apply your trailer brakes. And that's good to have. 
you could use that in the event of, say, a sway situation. If the trailer kind of starts to get away from you a little bit, you can hit the manual override. It'll apply those brakes and kind of get it back in order and straighten it out behind your transit. So at the end of the day, a very good option for the transit. It mounts up nice and looks good. It's going to be really easy to use and have all those functions and that adjustability that you need whenever you're operating a vehicle like this. So now that we kind of talked a little bit about the brake controller, let's go ahead and kind of talk about some of the features and how the harness is going to work with it. The best thing about this kit is it's going to give us the capability to use a brake controller. And that's something you don't find too often for the most part with one kit. A lot of times you'd have to piece together multiple different components and search for different parts and pieces and really think about what you're doing to make everything work properly. This one, the bones are all there. There is a couple little things you will have to grab, like a bracket, for example, doesn't come included with it. Maybe an extra buck connector, zip tie, but the majority of it is all there and you really don't have to think about anything else other than setting up your harness and getting it all hooked up. The kit is going to have a power output of 4.2 amps per circuit for your stop and turn signals and 7.5 amps per circuit for your taillights. So more or less what that means is it's going to provide us with plenty of power, whether we have older type incandescent bulbs or those newer style LEDs. With that being said, the seven way is gonna give us all of our lighting functions, our brake controller output, and another function, which is the 12 volt auxiliary power. So now inside of our transit, we can take a look at that brake controller adapter plug. So this is gonna give us the capability to plug into a brake controller and have everything work the way it should. This type of plug will work with many different types of popular brake controllers. Now, as far as installing the brake controller itself, really easy, it more or less just plugs right in and bolts up. Now the wiring harness that we have to run to be able to do that does take a little bit of time, but it really isn't too crazy. It's pretty easy to figure out. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and do that together now. To begin our install, we're gonna be here at the back of our transit. You'll swing your doors open and we're gonna to need to remove our taillights. So we're gonna have two Torx bit screws. So I'll grab a T25 and get those removed. Let me kind of grab the tail light and work it around. Kind of pull it back towards you. And so you kind of have it pulled out here, we're going to disconnect it here at this connector. So you just push that tab in and release it. And then we're going to repeat the same process over on the other side. On each side, we're going to have this little plastic panel here we need to get out of the way. Really straightforward, you can kind of just grab the top of it, pull it out a little bit and up, and that'll release it. Now over here on the driver's side, we're gonna have this grommet here that has our factory tail light connector. We're gonna kind of squeeze that together and push it in. You can pull it out of this little opening that our panel is covering up. And what we're gonna do is grab our new wiring harness and the T connector here with the yellow brown and white wires. This side here will plug into the factory connector like that. And this side that has this wire loom on it and this grommet, what you're going to do is take this connector in, push it back in through that factory opening and out of the hole, pass that grommet through and then we can kind of pull back to seat that grommet. Now what we can do is grab our tail light and plug it back in. And we can just go ahead and reinstall it the opposite way that we removed it. What we can do now is take our whole harness and we're gonna put it through this opening and kind of feed it down to the bottom side of our transit. So I'll just push maybe a foot or so in, and to make it easier, we're gonna go underneath. There's a rubber grommet down there that we can pull out. That way we have a ton of room to be able to kind of pull everything down underneath. So here underneath, this is that 
rubber grommet I was talking about. So we'll get that removed. Let's take a flathead screwdriver, and pry underneath it and pop it out. And the other side's gonna have the exact same grommet, so we'll pull that one out over there too. Once you get it out, kind of reach in and grab your wiring and work it down. You may have to kind of go back up and feed it as we go or have maybe a friend up there kind of helping pull the wiring along as we bring it down to the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and secure our box. We're gonna use this two-sided sticky tape. So we'll peel one side off. And before you do this, you wanna make sure everything's nice and clean. Put it on the box, peel off this other side. And I'm gonna put this right up in this pocket. That way it's out of the weather on this flat surface here. Let's so kind of just line everything up and push it into place. We're gonna ground out our wire here. It's gonna be white with a pre-attached ring terminal. We're gonna secure that to the, the metal body of our vehicle. And so I think I'm gonna go right here in this area and I'm gonna use a self-tapping screw to get it secured. So I went ahead and started to kind of run some of our wiring, brought the main loop up and over this brace here. The really long bundle of wire, this is eventually going to get ran towards the front of our transit. So I kind of just took that and started running it a foot or so that way. And for now, we're just going to let it hang out. The other connector here that will go to our seven way, it has all this tape on it. Just ran it over here close to the center of our hitch. We we're eventually going to mount our seven way plug. And the T connector here, this is going to go into the passenger side taillight pocket. So I just kept everything tied up with some zip ties. And here's that opening, just like the driver's side. What I'm going to do is feed this up into the taillight pocket. That way we can get it plugged in. So now that we're done under here working with our openings, what you can do is just cut a little square out in that grommet for our wires to pass through on both sides. And then just to help keep everything sealed up, I'm gonna take some silicone, which you can find here at E-Trailer, and just kind of fill the gap in. Over on the passenger side, we're gonna do the same thing with our T-connector that we did on the driver's side. We can push in on that factory grommet where it plugs into our tail light. Feed that connector through, plug our T connector into the factory one. We're gonna take this end with the grommet on it and run it back through. That way we can plug our tail light back in. Now we can wire up our seven way connector. So this is the end of the wiring that had all the tape on it. So you peel that off that tape and it'll expose all these wires. If you grab the back of our plug, each one of these is going to plug into that. But there is a particular pattern that we need to plug those in. So we'll go over that now. We'll start over here with this larger hole. The white wires gonna get plugged into that. And then if we move down below it, our blue wire will go there. Brown wire will go there. Right here, the black wire will plug into. Above that, the green wire will get plugged into it. Right here, the red wire will go. And in the center, the yellow wire will plug into it. So if you flip it around, we'll do the yellow wire. For example, you can take the connector, push it into place, and it'll kind of snap in there and be completely seated. It won't easily be able to pull out, and that's how you know it's connected. So I'll do that same thing to get the remaining wires all plugged in.
So here's what all of our wires look like once we have them plugged in to the connector. Now once we have them in there, we're gonna take this gray retaining clip and I feed it through the wires and just pop it down into place. From there, we kind of pull this back some, line up with our bracket. We can take our seven way connector and plug that together. So I went ahead and just secured our seven way plug to the brackets here. Now, brackets don't come included with the kit, but there is a ton of different styles available here at eTrailer that will allow you to mount this up in a very similar fashion. So that big bundle of wire that we kind of just let hang earlier, I went ahead and routed that to our battery box underneath the front driver's seat. And the way I did it, this is followed up along through here, securing it along the way with some zip ties. And when you route this, you want to do your best to avoid any hot or moving parts. I kind of just followed some of this factory wiring. It goes on along the side of our fuel tank. Right here. And this is where it goes up into our battery box. And I know this area is our battery box because this right here, since the battery's inside, it has to be vented. So this is a battery vent tube. So what you wanna do is get underneath your driver's seat, look in the battery box, and find a spot that's real open, close to the vent tube. You're gonna to wanna to drill a small pilot hole to get it to come out of the bottom. And then you can use a larger drill bit to drill a hole big enough to feed your wiring up through there. Now I did use a bushing or a grommet the pops in there to help kind of keep the wires from rubbing on that bare metal. And then I went ahead and used some silicone as well to kind of layer it over that to keep everything sealed up. So now here inside, or underneath our driver's seat where our battery box is, and this is where our wires come up. So we have a blue one, a black one, and a red one. We're gonna just kind of set this blue one aside for now, and we're gonna focus on hooking up the black and the red. So these are gonna to go to the positive terminal on our battery. So the red wire is gonna get connected to the positive battery terminal, which is right back there. So I'm gonna kind of just eyeball the length here that we need. So I'll go ahead and cut it. And you wanna hold on to the remaining wires, the extra length there. But we're going to strip this insulation back and I give the wires a twist and ensures a good connection. And we're going to hook it up to a fuse holder. The fuse holder that you want to connect it to will be labeled tow harness power module power fuse 15 amp max. And so take your fuse holder, pull that insulation off. One end of the fuse holder is going to receive a ring terminal. So we'll slide that over and crimp it down. The other end of the fuse holder is going to receive a heat shrink butt connector. So we'll put that in and crimp it down too. And simply the other end of the buck connector here, the open end, this will get connected to our red wire. So that'll slide in, get crimped down. And once we have it connected, we can grab a heat source. I'm using a heat gun and seal up those ends. So I went ahead and cut our black wire that come up into the battery box and connected a fuse holder to it the same way we did our red one, except this time I used the fuse holder that's labeled seven way harness power fuse 30 amp max. 
And then I took that piece of black wire, that extra wiring that I cut to put our fuse holder on, took it and connected a fuse holder to one end of it. Same way, buck connector, ring terminal, and the fuse holder I connected it is labeled brake control power fuse 30 amp max. So what I'm gonna do now is connect our ring terminals to the positive battery terminal. Now, before you do that, you wanna make sure that the fuse caps are opened up and the fuses are not installed. We'll put those fuses in at the very end once we have everything hooked up. So on that positive battery terminal, this nut here you can remove using a 10 millimeter wrench. Then we can take our ring terminals, place them over that stud. Hold them in place and then re-tighten our nut to secure everything. So what we need to do now is that blue wire that we had left over, as well as the extra length of black wire that we had capped and put a fuse holder on, we need to route these up underneath the front of the dashboard. So where we're at right now is the front driver's seat. So on the face or the front of our seat, towards the door jam, there's gonna be a small little opening there. And what you can do is just take a drill bit and drill into the plastic battery box and take that blue and black wire and feed them through that opening. So what I'm gonna do now is just to try to conceal these and give us a clean install look, is just kind of start tucking them underneath some of our trim work and floor. And I'm gonna route them kind of over here towards the center of our dashboard area. So right here under the dash is where our blue and black wire kind of drop down and you put buck connectors on each one and these are gonna get matched up color for color on our brake controller harness here. The brake controller harness has this little square plug and four wires coming out of it. So straightforward, the blue one goes to the blue and the black one goes to the black. Now that we have these hooked up, we can work on getting the white wire and red wire squared away. So the first wire we're gonna focus on here will be the red one. And this is going to get connected to the cold side of our brake switch. So if we come here to this panel, we can pull that off. Kind of just pops off and that'll give us a better look at our brake switch which is located right here. And I went ahead and tested the wires and what you're looking for is the wire that has no power until you push down the brake pedal. Once you push that brake pedal down, you want that wire to see about 12 volts. So I checked that wiring and found out that this purple wire with a white stripe here on the end closest to the driver's side door, that's going to be the wire that we're working with. So what we're gonna do is take our red wire and we're going to quick splice the two together. This is what that quick splice looks like. And there where it's open, it'll slide onto the purple wire and then we can push the red wire into the other end We'll grab a pair of needle nose pliers when the wires are both inside and push that down to crimp them together. Once you push that tab down, that will connect the two together. Then you can just close up the cover. And for our white wire, really straightforward. It's just going to be a ground wire. So I just ran it up into here and there's gonna be a big metal brace right there and so you attach a ring terminal to the white wire and secure it to that brace using a self-tapping screw. Now we can grab our brake controller 
and get it mounted to our dash. So I kind of just like to eyeball everything to make sure it's going to line up good. And I put a little mark here, and I think that's where I'm going to secure it. It's easy to reach, but still up and out of the way. So I'm going to use this little bracket. And what we're going to do is take the screws that come included, put them through our bracket, and secure this bracket to our dashboard. Now before we actually secure our brake controller to that bracket, it's easier to just plug it in down here. And at this point, we can actually take our brake controller and secure it to the bracket. Now, I did kind of pull back on this panel. Gives you a lot more room to work to thread these screws in on each side and just makes life a little bit easier. So I went ahead and kind of bundled up and secured our wiring underneath the dash. And this is what it looks like. Now whenever you do this, you just want to be sure to avoid any of those moving parts. And now with everything hooked up, we can come back to our fuse holders and install the corresponding fuses into position. And don't forget to close up them dust covers too. Now that we have our brake controller hooked up, it's a good idea to test it. So you can hook up your trailer or use a tester like this here to make that happen. So go ahead and hit my manual override and make sure that power is indeed getting sent back. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Takancha Prodigy P3 brake controller on our 2020 Ford Transit 250.